um, open up the pre-town meeting at 6, 14, or 15, whatever it is. And um, one thing we had on the agenda for that is a correction to page 69 of the Rochester High School Repurposing Committee um, report. And there's a number on midway down the page. It was, this is regarding how much a, um, for every 100,000 in property value, the rate would increase by an extra $16. And that should be every um, 160. 160. For that 91,000, right? So it'd be an increase of 160, not $16. For every hundred thousand dollars, so yeah. oh, it's one hundred and fifty rather than sixteen. One hundred and sixty. Decimals oh, in the zero rather than one sixteen. Move it over one to the yeah. right. Yeah, yes. add add one there. <clears throat> that was one piece that we had noticed that was not proper in the town report, and we'll open it up to everyone else out here and in terms of the pre-town meeting any concerns or questions about the um did the town reports go out are they in people's hands yeah. so yeah. people they should have a chance to look at them yeah so um i have something to say relating to the high school report in the essay and what do you call it in the, in mm -hmm. or about is it is this appropriate to talk about that's that's why we're here yeah so i, I was hoping Vic would be here so i got argument about this but uh I guess I'll just have to make do the best I can. So in this very long four-page uh, essay on the subject, I'm still very concerned that the issues of cost and risk are not being put in the foreground. They're not clearly in the foreground in common sense, easy to understand terms. Now, as you guys know, two years ago at the town meeting, I, I brought in a, a, a list of problems with the buildings with associated costs. Mm -hmm gave it a, a committee and, and Vic assured me they would publicize that, it never was. Um, so I, I think, and, I, and I'll try to keep this at three minutes as I think, I'll try to prepare. Uh, I think there's a start, the reason for this is there's a stark difference between what I think is a very basic assumption of this whole question of the building and how the committee sees it. And, and this was uh, clarified for me in an argument I had with Vic Robson when I left the committee. I uh, said to him, this is first and foremost a matter of money, cost, and risk. And he was pretty hot. I was pretty hot, too. And he said, no, Rob, this is not a question of money. It's a question of community. And he was really heated about it. And, of course, I, I love the community, and, and, and I like that idea. But, you know, we're a community that has to buy gravel. We have to have a road crew. We have to have a town office. We have to pay people. It, town is about money to a large degree, and this is a huge issue. Um, but I, I've continually felt that the very simple, common sense, nuts and bolts information about cost and risk was just never in the foreground. In this report, it's sort of in there. But an indication of how it's not in the foreground is that in this huge document of more than four pages or whatever it is, bearing in mind the fire department was able to have a report which was with, with all the fires they put out and all that accidents they went to and every, their, everything else they did in one page. So in four pages of information here, there's exactly one sentence that says, here's how we're going to pay for this. One sentence. And that sentence is, uh, we expect the grants will, will pay for this. They, they refer, they say the building has good bones and needs upgrades. Well, this is a language about, you know, the, the downplays, uh, up, these aren't upgrades. If you look at the list of what has to be done, it's a very big and daunting list that adds up to $3 million. So I'm concerned, again, that this very good-hearted committee made up of good friends of mine. Vic's a good friend of mine. Catherine has been very good to me at a personal level in the eight years that I've lived here. I love these people. They're really good people. But I think in the way that Dick and I disagree, in a vision of community and in a vision of just money, it's made the, 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 either the ability or the willingness of the committee to really put this hard information out there in a simple way where people can read it has been impeded by what's basically a good-hearted uh, mission. That's a good-hearted mission to say it's for community. Mm -hmm. uh, but we need, the stuff that we need 
is, is gravel, is the, is, are the fundamentals of running a town. Do we really need this in terms of cost and benefit? Do we, that's a big question. And these questions are, are not being addressed. They're not being discussed. There aren't open meetings in which you know, people like me can get up and say, what about this, what about that? Uh, and I'm very uncomfortable with that. I, I, um, I don't mean, these are good friends of mine. I don't mean to knock them. They did a huge amount of work, and God bless them, and they're doing it for the right reasons, but I think there's a very sharp divergence in how they see the question and how I see it. That doesn't make me right. That's just, that's just how I see it. I think there ought to be at least two open meetings on this subject, two open, where people can talk about it. And people can discuss and disagree, like we do with the merger. There were very lively meetings before the merger, where people came in and people were pissed off and waving arms around and, you know, discussing it, kicking it back and forth. I think there were three of them. They were pretty heated, and, and you know, we, we moved the whole thing forward. I feel like that's never happened with this. Now, of course, COVID happened in the middle of this. Um, so that's really my only point. It's the same point I made two years ago mm -hmm. when I made that list for Vic, and it's the same list I gave you guys. Uh, now, Vic contacted me last week. He said, we want to use your list, but we want to edit it. And I wish he was here because I, I said, what do you want to do? And he showed me the draft. He'd take my thing. Pre he had taken all the money out of the, the There was a list of problems, how many windows you need. Here's the condition of the room, you know, with a price tag on each one of them. So he took all the money out and put it in a... Uh, summary. So he didn't, the, money, it, the information wasn't taken away, it was just made smaller and less evident. And, and that's kind of the philosophy of communication that's going on in that committee, I think. I don't, he told me he was going to, they were going to provide that at the town meetings, a version of that. But there's no mention of okay. it here in the, in the uh, report, so I have no idea. And he never got back, to, I think he was a little annoyed after talking to me, so uh, he never got back to me on that, so... So that's all I've got to say. It's the same message. I really wish that this committee would get this cost and risk information out in the foreground in a clear, common sense, easy to read fashion. And that's the end of my yep, presentation. And, that, and this whole topic or issue is why we have pushed, and originally we had talked about having a vote on this at the town meeting, and we said absolutely we're not ready for that because the information had not totally been uncovered yet and not properly shared either. So as, is, as, as of this point, there is no set date for that meeting because we're still waiting for more concrete information to come mm -hmm. about. And I would fully anticipate that we do hold at least a few public meetings mm -hmm. to talk about that, to make that an educated vote. Okay. Pat? If the optimism of the committee diminishes, mm -hmm. the committee will no longer seek out if the building itself can be converted into anything. So we're not even at that point yet. We're still in the phase of saying, is it at all possible whether it would conform to the laws, the rules, the grant re uh, requirements. Um, we're still in that phase. Um, we can't get to the next phase of renovating the building until we know whether the building even has a future. Um, we're not sending carpenters and lead abatement people in there only to find out that Act 250 is going to say no to any of it. So we're, we're going to get there. It's, it's taking forever, you know, and it, it's it, it's a very slow grind when you're trying to get money for grants. And the discovery process uh, sometimes looks like a black hole. It just goes further down and further down. Um, this week there was a meeting about the flood plain, which we were all, well, I was all... Uh, fearful that the new flood maps are being designed as we speak over the over the course of the next three years. Um, but it was discovered that Rochester's already been done. So what we see is what we get in Rochester. It's other parts of the rivers along the way that are that are being surveyed and all analyzed. But we're already done. So. Uh, the fear of saying, oh, the floodplain is going to come back and haunt us, 
um, we know what the floodplain is, and that line's not going to change, as, as it will in many other communities. But in Rochester, that is, that is the line that we're dealing with. That's what we learned in a meeting last week. That was a very small, you know, glimmer of hope because there's still a lot of other hurdles for us to go through. Um, then, if at the end of all of those hurdles, if it still seems any way doable, then we're going to start tackling, is the building doable? And your list will come up for sure. And you know what? Those numbers will probably be double. Probably, yeah. And yeah. so, I, I, rest mm -hmm. assured, you're, you're not forgotten. You're just on the back burner because there's a lot of things on the front burner still. Sure. You can't get that front burner shut off. Yeah. <laughs> um, once it does, then the back burner will come forward. And it just is an incredible amount of time. COVID, COVID was a factor, mm -hmm. but not the only factor government wheels turn very slow yeah. thanks I, I appreciate that and, I, and I, I want to say that i'm not here to lobby against buying the building i could argue it either way uh there's i mean it's a very very complicated subject to me i just think this this information thing needs to be out front that so that's my only gripe yeah, and this, it is a slow process uh, um you know and, it, and the wheel has to turn that's that's all uh, but I, but I think this putting that money information out front is important. But I won't beat the already beaten horse to death. It's coming. I do, I do think something, and Rob, in your defense, a little bit. I do think at some point the select board has to make a decision on where we stand to, and I think that's going to be important for the community to know before we go for a vote. And I, you, everybody knows where I stand on this. And I'm not, I haven't wavered on that. And I probably won't just because the finances are just aren't there for the community to own that. And I'll stand by that principle probably till the end, but that's, that's where I stand. I, you know, if this committee wants to form a nonprofit and buy the building, go for it. But if they don't want to, and they want the town to own it, I'm dead set against it. And I will be dead set against it. So that's where I see it. And at some point, the select board has to stand somewhere. Yeah. And we'll have to do. Yeah, and I would think at the point that we're presenting the town with the time to vote on it, would yes. be a time to make that. Clear. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Anybody else have any input on this topic? To be continued, I'm sure. We'd like to hear it. <laughs> yeah. Any other topics on concerns or issues that have come up on the town report for the town meeting? If not, I would move to close the pre-town meeting. Second. And all in favor? Aye. 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 And now turn to open the regular select board meeting tonight. And I would... Um, to verify that we've properly worn this meeting on the internet and physically in town and email and folks. Okay, so the time, so we'll go forward. Um, we've got prior minutes from a uh, emergency select board meeting on February 10th, um, which was to open the bids for the West Hill Bridge, but that got um, delayed because we had an um, addendum to that and while we were in this meeting we did approve the Huntington House third class hotel license so those look proper to me I'd move to approve those I wasn't at the meeting uh, seconded no in favor Aye. Aye. okay and then the next two meetings I wasn't at so I'll let you present those <laughs> Go ahead. On September, well, no. yeah, September 13th was before September 17th. Yes. September. I mean, February. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> February 13th. Um, we, uh, it was a regular select board meeting. Um, the minutes were taken, I'm losing my, uh, called to order at 6.15. 
There was a lot of discussion during that meeting about the first responder services and then um, the meeting 732. Um, I read them. I approved the minutes and you want to second that? I will second that. All in favor? All right. All right. February 17th, there was a special select board meeting. Um, I was there on, uh, Jim, you were at this meeting. Oh no, it says no, I Frank Sarri, Pat Harvey, and we opened the bids. We had four bids for the replacement of the West Hill Bridge. Um, we did not make any decisions at that time. It was just a bid opening with the prices and um, meeting adjourned at 2.06 p.m. So it was a six minute meeting. <laughs> <laughs> I uh, move that we approve these. Seconded. All in favor? All right. All right. So we have um, guests and I think it's probably the first item under new business, Dean, to talk about skate space and the update. Yep, um, updating the fundraising um, that we're continuing to do. Um, we are we have approximately fifteen thousand dollars as of as of this point. Um, we have um, we're very thankful for the fire department. We had it cleared this winter. Uh, no liner. The ground froze. Uh, they flooded it, and it was used, um, I would say, for about six weeks. And we were trying to beat the, the weather, basically, at that, that point in January. But it was utilized um, quite a bit this winter. Um, from here on in, we have decided to forego plowing for the rest of the season to try to save uh, that money towards... Um, the uh, rebuilding of it. So I believe we, we, uh, we got $900 to, for uh, John Gorton to plow. And I think that personally is key for any forward movement. You've got to keep it plowed so the ground freezes and then it can get flooded. Uh, so we're trying to, basically we're not plowing for the rest of the season. Um, Sun's high. It, the, the 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 ice had evaporated um, in that time. Um, so I'm here also asking the select board to keep skate space in the forefront of ARPA funding um, for the future of getting uh, the funds to um, to increase our numbers so that we can get uh, matching funding from other resources. So what's the target number you are hoping to get Total to? Total target number is 50K. And what's the target number to match the, the grant? Well, you know, it depends on we how you, what 20. they do for matching. But this particular, um, um, one of the, the state of Vermont rec fund, last year I was hot about doing it, it, there was a September 10th deadline, mm -hmm. and they had up to $25,000. Up to twenty five. dollars Right. So yeah. if we got twenty five, dollars okay, we could get twenty five, dollars But that's not a given. Yeah. You know. Um, it's it's uh, uh, application. It, applications, et cetera. Um, Norm is, uh, has done a, um, um, uh, what is that, the Levesque? Yeah. There's a Levesque Award from uh, Gifford Medical, <clears throat> um, and uh, they're, they're handing out two grants of $2,000 each, um, and we applied for those. Um, and it's just, just regulated to the valley. Um, Randolph, um, you know, Hancock, down to Pittsfield. Um, so <clears throat> we're hoping for that, um, and we're going to be doing, at, actually the Vermont Rec, or the state of Vermont offers two separate grants, which we're going to be reply, uh, applying for that have matching funds, um, and determining exactly which matching funds are um, qualify is, is a little bit up in the air right now. Definitely the individual donations will qualify. 
and that's totaling right now 14,700. We've gotten uh, almost 100 different individual donors, which is amazing. I'm just uh, yeah. amazed at uh, you know, what, how, how people are backing us up. Um, so I, I think, you know, we'll get a nice chunk from these uh, state uh, grants, <clears throat> but the ARPA will be that final piece to augment and get us to 50000 That's the way I see it. Mm -hmm. Are those grants in kind? Um, you in know, kind, are those grants, are, are they in kind work where part of the matching money that you put forth is, is work-related? Or, or matching from the community as far as yeah. not just dollars and cents. It's, is it matched with work? Yeah. Or, so, or? so even as as of today, we we qualify for fourteen thousand seven hundred. Uh, now, may, maybe like this Levesco Award might, uh, you know, be a matching in kind thing as well. I think the question is that if if we get ARPA funds, is that continue? Contingent uh, uh, is it part of the initial matching funds that we need to get matched? You understand what yeah. I'm asking? Yeah. I don't see why it wouldn't be. No, I think they intended for ARPA funds to hopefully be um, yeah. as leveraged. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, to leverage yeah. Them, them in that way. Yeah. So it's not. Yeah. It basically our uh, the town's money now. It's no longer. Right. The federal mm -hmm. money. It's in hand. Right. Because one of the one of the grants basically says it can't have anything to do with federal funds. But I'm what I'm asking the select board is to promise us something so that we can go in front of them and say, well, we have uh, twenty five, we have thirty thousand dollars. We can get you know a matching fund of yeah. up to twenty five and one, and then another one. Yeah. So we're um, it's we're at a point where I would like I would personally like the the select board to make a decision in our in our favor in the in a direction of how we're gonna yeah where yeah. we're gonna head yeah um, do we have to be careful with that as far as the rules go on whether those can be used as matching monies and I'm I wasn't sure if that's the if that's clear yet, do you know? Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, I'm gonna in the next month or two. I'm gonna start really getting into those um, grants, all the details, the fine print, and you know, find out if they do qualify, or find out how. You know, what this, it seems like it's kind of a shell game. Yeah. Um, you know, where this money's coming from, what account it's sitting in, um, and then find out how to make that happen if there is. An avenue to make that happen. Nancy, did you have some input? How much are the state grants? Well, they they're. You said there are two grants. Yeah, we do. They have an amount this, attached to this them? one that I've got in my hand is the recreational facilities grants program. Um, this basically states that it uh, if the if the uh, resources creating get up to twenty five thousand dollars, it can match. It doesn't necessarily. It, it can match up to twenty five thousand. Mm -hmm. It doesn't necessarily that guaranteed. mean that they're guaranteed that. Right. Because there's another. There's a hundred towns yeah, after this money. Yeah. Um, but I, um, you know, and then there's in the fine print here, you know, and this is what um, this is the big question about what. Are, are the ARPA funds the towns now? And is it, you know, because it says you cannot use any state or federal funds as your one, one financial funding match. So Do you have it either comes, that, Larry? it either comes after, you know, you know, from, so we work our tails off to try to get as much as we can from the public and then you guys fill in the blanks at the end, but I'm I'm afraid that it gets frittered away personally, because yeah, it's I easy to spend. Yeah. No, we we pretty much it's, earmarked it's some earmarked for, for skate you. space. We, yeah. we haven't you haven't we haven't put the figure on that yet, okay. only because we want to get 
uh, two other projects that we've got in front of that but there is money earmarked for that that is our third third one this year um, we've got this wall out here that's been a an issue for the last five or six years that we can't get funding for which we plan on doing that we don't know what that's going to be mm -hmm. and also the extent of what happens at the library there and then we've kind of put a number in our head here to start with which was between 20 and 25,000 that we were looking at to supplement that. But my question is, I'm not sure that we can use ARPA money as match money. We have to use it for the project. We can't use it as a match to the project. I get it. That's so, and that's that's what, I'm not sure, we, we'd have to well, look at that. They've changed the rules on that, but is, yeah. do you understand it that yeah. way, Larry? Well, so, we can use I, it for anything. I have two questions. So, there, it, it is a technical question. And, and it relates in two ways. It relates to the rules of this grant. Right. And how this, what are the rules of this grant? And so that has to be investigated. And I think it could be answered quickly with a phone call mm -hmm. to this grant administrator. What, you'd get the answer immediately. I, I can, I can, okay. I can um, do with so, do that. But I basically, you know. Uh, but there, and, and 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 what is the timeline for this application? Well, when when is this grant? Things like August. Due? This 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 September? one, I'm just assuming it's the same date around September 10th. That's what it was last year. Um, so it's but, upcoming this summer. Yes. Okay. So. They're <laughs> not necessarily to really be discussed here, but there is an avenue for the town to take its ARPA money in hand, in total, now, and right. be done with the government, the federal government. Right. Um, Patty and I have discussed this briefly. Um, it's an avenue I think this board should carefully consider. Um, it room, but it's not for a discussion for tonight. So it would answer Dean's question. It then would be your money to use in any way you wish. Right. So, um, but we don't need to talk about that tonight. But. If you don't take that route, then there is a technical question about whether it can be used directly as match. Right, and that's the question that. Yeah, but that can be answered out. quickly yeah. by the yes. mm -hmm. by yeah. the grant administrator of this particular grant. Right. Um, so we are moving forward with the scope of work and the bidding process. Um, Oh, one of the one of the questions I had was, um, could the I know I, you might have been asked already, but um, when Cricket did the engineering of the site, she found a section of Martha Slater's land on the northern section still in her possession that she did not donate. We actually built on her land. Um, there's a little slice of the northern section of the of skate space, and uh, it was recommended by Cricket to have a lawyer um, try to deal with the easement. And I believe somebody said, I don't know, that the town, the the select board had okayed the use of the the town lawyer for the the easement of. Um, that Martha Slater needs. I talked with Martha. I think she's on here, yeah, right? Uh, and she doesn't that. have any issue at all with it. Um, but it's just a it's a dot dot in the eye kind of thing, right. where if we built it and the 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 property transferred somehow, it could be messy. So yeah. um, I'm asking the the um, the, the select board if they would utilize the town lawyer. Yeah, and you may not need to use a town lawyer if it's just a, a minor lot line adjustment, but we could look into that. 
Martha's got something to say. Um, I just just wanted to say that I remember them talking to me about that, and I'm perfectly fine with whatever works out, you know, as far as um, because I want the skate space to be used, you know, I was very, very, you know, I, I because I live directly above the skate space, um, you know, I, I like when he was talking about the six weeks that the skate space was used this winter and everything. I mean, year round, I look down and I see people down there enjoying it. And I really am glad that we have that. So I'm perfectly fine with whatever they come up with. I don't, you know, I don't, I didn't realize that there was an issue before and whatever it is, it's okay with me. Okay. Because I want, I want the town to have that. So, also, Dean, with your grant, you say you have $15,000 in hand now with donations. So even if you went for your grant and that fifteen was the matching, that would give you 30 Yep. And then we have an earmark of 20 So it, I think you should sleep well at night saying that this could happen. Okay. That's that's what I wanted to hear. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. We, um, we, we I, planned on that right when okay. we first came in. All right. We just needed to address some other issues. That's before really we great news. Us. I got one other question. Mm -hmm. um, I'm basically coming up with a scope of work, and I was wondering if I could use the town website to <laughs> have the bids go out. Um, you know, I don't really know how to do it other than pick up a phone and ask three contractors, which I will do anyway. Um, but the, the town does use the website for the bidding process. A good avenue for that might be through Cricket, if she's still involved. Well, I, I, I emailed her. She could put it up on her. ACCD. Yeah, I emailed her last week. Uh, she might be away, I don't know, but um, she, has always been very helpful and um, I'm going to run what I have by her mm -hmm. for sure. Uh, it's just a matter of uh, how it gets out there. Yeah. That's all I'm asking. Yeah, there's an avenue that goes through the state of Vermont and just gets broadcast to all the contractors everywhere. And um, she knows how to do that. So she might be that sounds like avenue avenue. for that. The LCT, you can also add, you can advertise through them. Yeah, they usually put it on their site. Yeah. Yeah. Great. As a municipal park, I mean, the bidding should go out through the municipality anyway, don't you right. think? I would think yep. so. That's yeah. The that, town should be putting that out, not the right. rec committee. So I think. when I finalize this, I'll run it through Cricket and then... Yeah, we we we'll should, give it to we you. should all get together and, and do it yeah. because okay. it has to go through the municipality. It's a yep. you're part of that, so yep. okay, that's the way we have to look at that. I would think. All right, thank, thank you, you very much. Thanks for all your perseverance and vision and work on that. So enough of this small money stuff. Let's talk about the, <laughs> the, the big, big money big stuff big here. Board. We got we got um, so we got uh -huh. the bids. Um, for the West Hill Bridge, and were they what? How much higher than we were hoping? Fifty percent higher? At the, yeah. at the cheapest they, one, or a hundred percent higher? They were double what we were double hoping. what we wanted. Yeah. yeah. So, um, been in contact with with uh, the engineer, uh, Jason Keener. And um, we have a time frame where we have to address this, and I believe it's 30 days, if I'm not. He said he, it, it's the right thing to do. Yeah, yeah. within 30 there days. To, to and we can do look at it a few different ways. We could say all the bids were too high and and not award it, or we could award it to the low bidder, which. Uh, Jason is still in the process of reviewing those bids as far as he wants there's some questions that he has that he wants to address and um, so we would want our best bet is to hold off on whether or not we award this or make a decision on it at this time um, I I personally 
think that we're going to have to look at funding this because I, I think down the road it's just going to get more expensive and it's not going to be price won't go down it's not going to go down and we run a risk if we refuse by only having four bids we run a real risk of having nobody bid again and I would feel differently about it if the bids were closer together so that everybody was in a game, but we there's a pretty major discrepancy between the bridge uh, the bids. So I I think we really run the risk of nobody bidding again, and so I I think we need to really look seriously at the low bid here and see if we can come up with a way of funding it. So so what what will we be short? We're, I'm still talking with the state on trying to get an extra 400,000 or something. Uh, yeah, we're, we're a little more than 400 short. No. Um, we have about two, <laughs> two thirds of the money, and the states possibly can give us another 25,000. So <laughs> that, that would be we we'd okay, be two. up to like a little short, like 400. And, 25 <laughs> so, but i don't you know we can't every bid has come in that way talking with the state every everybody's been surprised at how much they are and so i i don't know it's it's a decision we have to make if we don't do it we run the risk of not getting any bids possibly they handed out 18 sets sets of plans and we got four. And we've got four bids, roughly 18 sets, but only 12 were legitimate bid packages going to legitimate contractors. So to only get four bids and have them three being really high and close, and then one being halfway reasonable or pretty reasonable, we, we figure. Um, if we could have done it three years ago, we might have been able to get it for that. But how everything worked out, it just didn't yeah. happen. So, well, you look at, compared to the school, and it's a bargain. Huh? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it just goes to show what we're faced with down the road. Yeah. I mean, if you take on a project like the school, and you you run into something like this, where you have a, a what 15 that bridge goes to 15 people plus recreational place force you know forestry and all that you know it's I mean, we're lucky that the forest service is coughing up the amount yeah, that they are and it would already. be difficult for us to turn our back on that funding because it may never come back to right. us again so, right, right um that that is almost a gift that we should not refuse yeah well, there's no guarantee we would be able to hold the funding for it for three years down the road. And, and then yeah. no guarantee the price would be anywhere near what it is right. now. And Two Rivers doesn't have any avenue for us to go knocking on yeah. grant doors at this time. And, and the only money is... There's money there. coming, but it's not here yet for the mm -hmm. infrastructure bill, the Biden infrastructure mm -hmm. bill. And uh, it, it's not downloaded to us yet. So yeah. I don't know if we would be able to apply for funding on a project that we already have planned for this year. That's the next batch of funding that's coming is infrastructure, which would be designed for this, but it's not here yet. Hmm. So we continue to dig with the shovel. We're working for you folks. So we're kind of just going to look and see where the where we might possibly address the funding issue, and we'll go from there. But I, I believe we have a 30-day window that we have to make a decision in. So and how far into that 30 days are we already? That's from the so? that's 17th? from the day the bids were open. 17th so February. So since uh, the 17th of February. So, so we so really it's need like to. It's like the 12th, I think, of of March, right? That we'd need to make a decision on awesome. mm -hmm. next meeting. Yeah. Martha has her hand. Yeah, Martha. I was just going to say that when the meeting at which you opened the bids was the 17th of February, so gives you to the.
so at the next so you're saying now that you you're just feeling that you're going to make a decision at the next regular select board meeting on the 13th or, or an emergency meeting or an it. emergency right. meeting or i guess meeting. what we're saying is we're um not going to make a decision tonight okay but, but you need to make a decision by march 17th is what i should say uh march uh, that would be 30 days from when you opened the bids. Yes. Right, right. Well, right. there's only 28 days of February, so you got to knock a couple of days off of it. <laughs> Next meeting is a 13. And, and we'll probably be more equipped to make a decision when we hear back from the engineer because he had some questions about the bids and, and he was going to address those that, that he was going to get back to us. So. I think we'll wait until we hear hear that, and then we can figure it out. Okay, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Okay. Any any um, good ideas from the crowd about where we can come up with a quick <laughs> four hundred thousand? You got a, the you get a couple there. extra bucks in your pocket. You want a to donate? Sale. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, too bad Irene just didn't just. Having one more oh, kick for that. Kick bridge. one more. But it no. Um, so I guess we'll. Um, it's too bad we couldn't build the road and forget the bridge. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Come yeah. on the tank side there, but it's steep enough you couldn't do it. Well, on the other side of the money spectrum, we did finally succeed in getting the. Um, some re reimbursement from is this from FEMA or the state? This is our FEMA. last um, reimbursement from FEMA. So the sixteen thousand five thirty is the Cat Z. So that's like the um, Jones time that she spent on the FEMA work, mm -hmm. and then the thirty one thousand one sixty eight is the state's portion. So those will be our two final. And these were regarding which project? April 2019. Yeah, 2019, 20, 21, 22, 23. Wow. Yeah. Four years. I've done a lot. Mm. Well, okay. Well, it's accepted, huh? Yeah. The total total that you're that you're receiving. I'm sorry. I'm confused. Aren't there two there? Two There's totals. two totals. One of them is 16,530, 17. Uh-huh. And the other one is thirty one thousand one sixty eight ninety four. And they're both, but they're both basically from FEMA. You could say that. Yep. Okay. Thank you very much. I'm sorry, I didn't hear the correct figures before. Yep. Okay. This is from Bethel Mountain Road. Oh um, no. Yeah. And various other locations. It would have been all the, um, not the Bethel Mountain. All the um, sites, right? Yeah, right. All, oh, all the sites. Sky the Hollow sites and, yeah. Maple, and Hill. Uh, Maple Hill, Wing Farm. There were like 26 sites, were yeah. there? Yeah. 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 yeah, at least 21. Yeah. There's a bunch of them. Yeah, a lot of paperwork. Okay. It's a lot easier to talk about accepting money than spending money, isn't it? <laughs> That's been hard money to get. Yeah, yeah. We haven't got it yet. <laughs> no, we haven't. And that, yeah. um, that will allow us to be put into the pool to receive the funds. So it's still going to be some time before we okay. get it. Yeah. It's crazy. We're, we're just jumping in the pond with, okay. our, with that signature no. there, buddy. Okay. <laughs> All right. Um, Tony, got any um, reports from the library tonight? Let's see, last uh, Thursday's paper had a lot of information about things going on at the library. But one that I think I should mention is the uh, great uh, decisions discussion, which will start again uh, April 18th. And we will run for something like eight, eight different Tuesdays, I believe. So I think that was mentioned there too, but there's there'll be a lot of information about that. All right. You guys are talking about great decisions that have been made at the select board. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> cool. Those two come up. <laughs> Should have been at our last meeting. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh dear. <laughs> the, um, and the um, highway is pretty self-evident, but it's been just working away at 
keeping the roads okay. clear. Yep. yep. Yeah. They've they've had their their issues, but Tre- you're bound to is yep. equipment always always some issues. Yeah. They've been busy. They're just miserable little storms where they have to do a, some work and mm-hmm. can't really settle on anything else. But things are. They're moving along. Yeah, they're doing as all they can. So right, they had started on some mud season work, and then <laughs> yeah. and then it regressed back to winter. Back so so that is depressing. Back in the plow <laughs> so they, they seem to have a tough time getting in gear for certain things. Yeah. <laughs> so um, Terry, you, you um, our contract for the spring walk around. I think that was a wise decision to make that a three year contract and yeah, sort of a yearly contract. It's yeah. just been taking so long for them to get a contract over to sign. Usually we'll wait, so this way yeah. we won't have to deal with it. Yeah. I think it's, I mean, you aren't going to change engineers at this point because it costs us a fortune to have a new yeah. company come in and redo our whole system. Yeah. And the fire department got their new truck? We got a new truck. You it's... got to exercise it already? Uh, no. No, not yet. We yeah. tore the old one apart and we can get done fighting the fire. Yeah. So everybody's really happy for a long day and for nothing. <laughs> <laughs> get them up early in the morning. <laughs> but Fine. yeah, it'd be, we got it so we can use it, but it's not nearly yeah. ready. It's going to take some time. But we spent considerable time today and tomorrow it'd be a couple weeks where it's all back together all right um this jeff get part in in the wings there yep good evening jeff good evening all uh well i heard it already mentioned it's the library that's most of what's on my plate um moment i've been working with uh to Rivers Ottaquichi, um, seeing if we can shoehorn that project into the Municipal Energy Resilience Program. Uh, that's ARPA money, um, have provided uh, uh, Two Rivers Ottaquichi with uh, detailed information on the town buildings. And it appears really that the library is the critical one at the moment, not so much on the energy standpoint, but on the building preservation standpoint, due to the fact that water is getting behind the cladding, um, particularly badly on the north wall, um, and we have roof leakage. Uh, This project is going to be very expensive. Today, window estimates came in, and frankly, I'm not that happy with the efficiency of the windows they chose to estimate, but they are quite costly, and that's six windows. we're looking at about uh, $3,700 just for a weather resistive barrier and the tapes that go with it. Um, the problem is, is that we have wood cladding over nothing. There's no weather resistive barrier there to kick water back out onto the face of the cladding. So we have to remove all of the cladding, um, and which is um, lead painted. And so there's additional expense in, in the abatement there. We have to basically uh, scaffold and cocoon the, the building um, to do the demolition. Um, we did have a, a high school site visit um, a while back. Robert Mayer and I were able to round up uh, all of what we know to be existing for blueprints for the building and to get that on uh, to the school system. Those have been digitized so that they can be further um, analyzed. Lyle, um, I wasn't able to attend, but uh, Matt Sharp from Efficiency Vermont came down and uh, did a walkthrough with uh, the former facilities person, Lyle Smith, who is helping out the uh, supervisory union. Um, They did a walkthrough and infrared thermography and identified some huge holes in the building. Um, Large relief, uh, uh, not valves, doors, um, frankly, I don't know, understand that what they were. I'm, I'm not that familiar with commercial construction, but um, in any case, there were enough very large holes filled that we should see a significant reduction in fuel consumption in that building going forward. And you know, listening to skate space discussion, um, you know, it, it, it really seems like we need a grant writer 
in this town or a grant to get a grant writer in this town. Uh, Dean's working on a scope of work. I'm working on a scope of work for a li for the library, but I'm not familiar with how with grant writing procedures and and whatnot. Uh, I do feel like I'm spending half my time attending grant writing workshops and workshops about grants that are available. Um, so uh, you know, I just uh, I have to wonder whether uh, we've got the right people doing the right thing. Um, you know, the, obviously one needs a scope of work to apply for a grant, but I think there's some other skills in grant application and acquisition that uh, I don't know of or have. Um, but as I've gotten, I've gotten most of the lumber materials um, pricing back, and so now have to do the estimate of actually how much of each of those things are necessary or needed. Um, you know, we'll need to do a review to see whether all of the efficiency things that were um, listed in prior um, uh, records from the town, uh, uh, you know, for things, upgrades done to the library, if there are significant ones there that were not done, this would be an opportunity to, to get that taken care of. Um, so that's that's pretty much it. There's just a lot of estimating to do to come up with a cost. And uh, I heard a number floated today that isn't going to cut it. Um, so, yeah, yeah it's going to be a costly project, I'm afraid. Jeff, have you uh, looked into utilizing Two Rivers for grant writing? Uh, I, I'm sorry, Pat, Patty, I could not uh, hear utilizing two rivers to assist you in the grant writing um i will if they are available to do that i'm happy to use them yeah they have been in the past so. i mean i'm i'm working with harry falconer on this uh, municipal energy resilience program uh, i have done the latest things that he has has requested and i uh, haven't heard anything back but i was off uh, with my granddaughters last week Well, thank you for um, your energy and time spent on all this. To be continued. Absolutely. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Speaking of grant updates, I think we got what's it, on here? Um, yeah, the only other thing that I have is that we received um, our reimbursement for the security cameras at the fire department. So mm -hmm. that's all closed out. That was quick. Mm -hmm. Easy. Um, we will be looking at some point. John has a request for the upper part of Bethel Mountain that we'll have to look at and see what what that is. Um, I've had talk with Chris Bump about projects coming forth for the town, whether what we need and what our needs are. And John put together a, a assessment of the Bethel Mountain that where he thought we could go and I've yet to address that with Chris, but I'll take care of that soon after we get through a few of these other things. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, I have to do it soon. I think we have to put that request in be sometime in April, I believe. Yeah. I th isn't that right, Kristen? Yeah. I think, yeah. So we'll be, I'll be doing it shortly at some point. Any old business? Got any um, old business that we haven't touched upon? Nope, any um, public comment from folks in the room or on Zoom? Well, I've been hearing scuttlebutt about we aren't going to be connected with the Granville uh, Rescue <clears throat> First Response. It's not that we're not going to be connected with it. We're, we've been um, trying to actually improve it and, and stimulate conversation around it. There's been some, do you want to 
speak on this pet? We did do a decrease in their funding, but we still funded them at 50%, a little more than 50% of what they requested. Um, there were some deficiencies that they're already showing some improvements, but we are also taking a step back and looking at um, the service that WERVA provides. You understand that this is not affecting WERVA coming over the mountain. The ambulance still comes. Right. Okay. Um, that can take a while. And, and they, are, they are responding to calls when they go out. So um, the, the first responders are the ones that come and they can, you know, uh, give you oxygen and, and tend to you, but they can't transport you. I know that. So we're taking a little bit of a step back and analyzing whether or not it would be wise to pool the communities together throughout the whole valley and improve the service so that perhaps we could, we have a lot of EMTs in this valley at this point in time, and um, perhaps use their services and improve the service to a point where we could transport and that way it would eliminate maybe Werva coming over the mountain, waiting for Werva to come over. If we, if we would allow them to expand into this valley and utilize the resources of the people, the EMTs that we have here, <coughs> it's still preliminary. So um, we're, we're exploring. But if you don't take a step back every 10 years ago and, uh, or so and look at your population, your demographic, and your needs, which also includes some backcountry rescue. Um, this is exactly what we're doing. We're just taking a step back and looking what. what In the meantime, what, we still have the same. Oh yes, roughly. I have a scanner. They're 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 responding. There's mm -hmm. yeah. No, we we did not terminate their service. Mm, thank you. No, no, we encourage them to continue on the path that they're they're going on and. Uh, mm -hmm. They have some very good members, and uh, we, we, we don't want to discourage or eliminate that. We want to enhance it and make it better. That sounds like a good plan. Yeah. Anybody on Zoom? Nope, no, Zoom is quiet. All right, I guess we'll um, bring this meeting to a close and. Um, Go home and wait for it to snow again. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Tonight. Thank you all for coming. Thank you. Thank you.